Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a craft that isn't the capital ship. In today's episode, we will not be building the capital ship as I have hit a bit of a creative block. I've tried to do the front section now about five times, and even recorded a full episode, which I ended up scrapping because of how badly I feel I've done. So rather than keep on trying and failing, I thought we should build something else to pass the time. And this even goes into the capital ship, as this will be the aircraft that uses up the hangar section. I decided to build a bit of a Zeppelin-like vehicle. It's going to be essentially an airship, with a top section containing all of the lift of the vehicle, and a bottom section containing the important components, like the turrets. It's nowhere near done yet, as you can probably tell. I've just made a basic shape and a basic shell that I'm likely to change over time. However, it can fly on just what you see in front of you, which is really good and encouraging because it means we don't need all that much space for these spinners, which are, of course, the dedicated spinners and have a full motor drive, so they actually do drain the engine ever so slightly. So with that, let's continue. The main idea with this is it's going to be a vehicle that can get up into the air incredibly quickly, as that's the major problem with the positioning of the AI guns and the actual hangar itself on the capital ship. This thing needs to get out of there as soon as it's made, before it gets torn to shreds by the turrets nearby. I was going for something a little bit smaller, but as always, I've decided to go more on the side of big. Again, I'm no I'm not sure how this thing is going to end up looking, but I'm pretty happy with the shape thus far. On the inside here at the bottom we have the engines which are being counterbalanced by the ammunition processors, the ammunition customizers actually they're called aren't they with the advanced cannons and then we have two advanced cannons on the front. The two portholes at the back here will be used for our anti-missile defense systems so that will be pretty good. The two major things we need to still do is actually build the turrets up and make it so this thing has a forward thrust. At the moment it simply can't move forwards or backwards, it has no control turning, it can't do anything but float in the air, which it can do really well actually. There we go, we've just turned the lock off and as you can see it is all perfectly balanced, or at least mostly perfectly balanced. There's a few things I do need to change, but I'm overall pretty happy. And back to the point, with the forward thrust, the, thwart, the forward momentum, what I think I'm going to do is add a couple of dedicated spinning blocks here, one at the back and one at the front, one dragging the ship forwards and the other one pushing it forwards, thus causing it to be quite quick. This will not be a slow craft, but it will be heavily armoured and heavily shielded. And with that, it's time to continue building this thing up. I think, first of all, what we need to do is get the basic shape done. Before we get any of that done, all the more functional components, we need the shape so we can see about the weight distribution. So what I'm going to do is finish off the... I'm going to call it the balloon section, even though it's made out of solid metal, because that's kind of what it's acting like. It's, it's acting like the balloon in a Zeppelin, containing all of the lift, but very few of the functional components. Well, that is surprising and actually really good. It seems like at the moment the vehicle is already very balanced in terms of its weight. It's actually going forwards at a decent rate currently of 11.3 meters per second and it's completely stable. You can hardly tell it's moving. There's a very slight pitch on the front because of this back rotor here which is causing the ship to always be flat, but other than that there's almost no indication this thing is moving at all. So really good, really well balanced, and I'm almost certain this is how we are going to have the forward thrust. I will however need to put this a little bit further back so we can actually do some work on the rear section of the ship here, but yeah, really pleased with that, really, really pleased. And of course we are going to need more of these as well because this is currently the max height, and honestly I would like it if we could get a little bit higher than this. And of course we are going to add more weight, so we are going to need more power anyway. Before we continue, I think it's important we cover one of the aspects of this airship, and that is this little section right here, because a lot of people have asked me in the past, how do you keep an airship stable without the use of wings? Because of course the wings do offer a wide variety of natural 
control methods both in the wings and the tail itself. Well, this is the trick right here. Essentially, it's a spin block on a completely different system to the other spin blocks that acts as a counterbalance if the front of the ship ever pitches up or down. And it's really simple to set up, and it's been used for so long in the From the Depths community. I think I used mine the first time about a year ago, back when the regular spin blocks were added, but now it's a lot easier because we have the dedicated spin blocks, which are these, the dedicated heliblade spinners, which are just way better and far more compact. Essentially, either at the very front or the very back of your ship, you will build a tiny little spinner like this. Nothing special, one block, a few blades on both sides, really small and compact. You then have two control blocks to actually control it. The first one will have activate if pitch angle is less than input. Then of course spin blocks and set rotation speed, and the input has to be zero, because essentially zero means flat. If, it is, if the angle is ever less than zero degrees, then it will try to raise the ship back up. And how it does this, at least from the back section, is you set the effect to minus 30. So this blade, this spinner blade, will try and push the back down if the front ever goes down itself, thus equalizing it and making it flat again. And then, as you can imagine, the other one has the exact opposite. Activate if pitch angle is greater than zero and up to 30. So if the front of the ship ever pitches upwards, this will try and cause the back to pitch upwards and it will flatten the ship once again. And then if you have this system on the front, you simply reverse it so if the angle is too high, it goes down. If the angle is too low, it goes up. It's actually, it, it makes a lot more sense if it's at the front, but the effect is the exact same if it's at the back. You just have to reverse the effect. So yeah, there's that. And the reason why it's so good now is that the spinner control has the motor drive. And the motor drive is absolutely fantastic because you can increase the strength of it and make it really, really compact. The old spinner blades had to be huge to actually have this effect, which themselves caused weight and then a bit of imbalance on the ship, which you had to account for. So really simple concept, really effective, and it results in something like this. You can see a very slight bob on the front, almost non-existent, that's what that is doing. In fact, if you wanted to see the effect a little bit more, what you could do is increase this thing's motor drive to like 10. There we go, you can now actually see the bob as the motor drive is far too strong for such a light ship. Okay, back to building the actual air balloon area, which I was saying before. A bit of a progress report. Okay, so I've got about halfway on the top balloon section, which is now slowly being um, smoothed off, so I'm happy with that. And I have done a little front section for us to sit in. Ah, so essentially that is very similar to the trilobite. It is, complete, it is completely separate to the main body other than a few beams, so sadly you can't leave it to enter the rest of the ship. This thing will not be accessible. It's going to be completely AI driven, so honestly It'll be so rare that my character's ever on board, I really don't want to spend the time trying to make it accessible by the avatar. But yeah, I am really happy with it so far. It's definitely a bit too flat on the top and definitely needs more stuff, but as a kind of drone ship, as a defender of the capital ship, I am really pleased with it. It's also coming along very nicely in terms of its armour. It is very heavily defended. The top balloon segment already has two layers of metal all of the way around, and the inside here has three layers. So this this thing will be really hard to take down from the air, which is kind of the whole point. It's going to hopefully attract attention from the enemies, and then just stay in the air weathering shots until eventually it, it is destroyed, in which the capital ship will then create a new one. So it's time to work on the actual weapon systems, and I'm of two minds about this. We could either have the true AI guns, like we have on the capital ship, which are fantastic, which of course we, we will be mostly using as anti-naval, believe it or not, on this particular ship, and I only call them AI because they'll still have the flak heads and the ability to explode if they miss the target. Or, we could up the shell size considerably and perhaps have a much slower firing kind of aerial bombardment completely for anti-naval. And I think, I really do think that 
the AI guns will probably do better just because this thing's going to be moving at quite a rapid pace. I've already increased the speed of it, it's now going at 25 meters per second, which for its size is actually pretty darn quick, which will get faster. And having so few shots, I can just see it missing and then taking so long to reload, it's almost not worth it. Of course, when it does hit, it would be fantastic. Having the extra height means you don't need the same amount of speed on the shot as you do on a naval unit, which of course means a lot bigger shots without the big drawback of being really, really short range. But I think for now, we're going to stick to the AI to, to the AI guns just because they're a lot more flexible and probably better suited for such a fast vehicle. In addition to this, we will be having missiles, which originally I was going to have for, as cruise missiles, but we could use torpedoes. I do love the concept of torpedoes falling from the sky, hitting the water, going underwater, and then making their way to the target. So that's what we'll probably do for anti-sub and anti-sea vessels. And then with the, the AI guns for some aircraft which aren't higher than the vehicle. Ah, oh, so many choices! I will make the choice soon, I'm sure. But for now, let's just build it as if we are going to have the AI gun. Which does mean I am going to need to make this wall a little bit smaller, I've just realised. The first prototype turret is complete, and it looks really cool. I will say, I do love using multiple barrels whenever I'm going to be using a much faster firing turret. Although saying that, that's the very reason why I don't use them on the capital ship. I find that when you go past a certain speed of shooting, having more than one barrel just looks silly, as all the barrels compress at once and then extend again, it looks bizarre. But having this one shooting twice per second, so going all the way around the gun, should look really cool. Now all we're waiting for is the belt fed loaders to completely reload and then we can give this thing a test. It should be shooting shells a little bit weaker than the AI guns on the capital ship, however, they should be a little bit more damaging in terms of their explosion. Higher explosion radius, higher explosion damage, less kinetic damage and less speed. It's time to test out the turret. Okay, I was going to test it against a Marauder like I normally do, however I think it would be best if we tested it out against something made of pure metal. So perhaps one of the Onyx Watches ships instead, like the... Where are you? If I can find the thing, that'll be fan- There we go, the Warden. Now, the Wardens, I find, are great test subjects because they are just giant lumps of metal. So, it's just a great thing to test on, honestly. So, let's just straight away turn off their, their AI. And here comes the shots, and let's see how they do. A little bit inaccurate, of course, because I haven't set up the AI of the gun yet in terms of aim point selection and such, but, yeah, that's absolutely fine, considering that's only one gun. Decent fire rate, a lot of damage per shot, already carved through the outside of the armour, yet that's absolutely perfect. Really happy with that. Recoil's probably a little bit much right now, but doesn't seem to be suffering too much. Definitely is suffering, but when it can actually steer itself, it shouldn't be such a big issue. There's actually a lot of damage. With, with aim point selection, that would already kill that ship. Okay, excellent. So I'll just copy that turret over onto the other side, and then next time, or later, depending on how much time I have left, we will sort out the actual casing, the, sh the um, turret cap, so it looks a little bit better, as at the moment it's just a bare turret. We're getting close to being finished. The airship should now have very, very basic flight AI. If it turns, it's working. If it doesn't turn, well, it's probably not. Yep, it's turning towards the target even with the recoil. Excellent. And there we go, both turrets unloading on the enemy. Those turrets are doing fantastic. Really happy with how those turrets have turned out, and it turns out that the recoil isn't strong enough to actually counter this thing's turning. Meaning that, well, it's completely functional now. In terms of sheer functionality, every basic component is now working, and I'm actually really happy with that. Well, there goes the Marauder. 
Well done. So, what do we do next? Well, next we have a few things we need to do. We still need to make the turrets look good. We need to figure out what we're going to do with the top section here. We need to add the torpedoes to the bottom of the ship. And we need to finish off the propulsion system at the back. Once that's done, this is a fully functioning and finished airship. Most of that can be done off camera, but let's see what we can do next. I think I'll start working on the torpedoes. It's a nice simple system and won't take much effort and I've already carved out a space inside the vehicle so we can start working which is just here be behind the lead blocks. The torpedo systems have been added and now it's time to test them out. They should be pretty darn good to be perfectly honest. They have three warheads each and four propellers. They are quite large torpedoes so, so they won't be fired particularly quickly but they should get the job done quite well. In addition to this they do have ballast tanks set up meaning they should go underwater until they reach the target in which they surface and hopefully do damage to the bottom of the ship rather than the side which of course is a lot more effective in most cases. Okay, releasing the torpedoes, straight into the water, and... There we go, excellent, yeah, very quick for torpedoes. Oh, we do have the turret still on, which will just allow for now, and... Perfect, yeah, hitting the bottom rather than the side, absolutely lovely, and causing a massive explosion in the middle. The ones which didn't cause an explosion caused a mass of damage, exactly what I wanted to see. The turrets are doing fantastically, so are the torpedoes. I think the anti-naval element of the ship is coming along very nicely. And I had a bit of a moment of inspiration whilst I was tinkering with some other things. I may add a very, very small turret to the top of the balloon segment just as an actual anti-air gun, using true flak guns, using true timers, and being extremely quick shooting with very weak pellets to fire at anything that's equal level to the, to, to the airship or above it. Oh, my stammer at the moment. Being ill and being a Let's Player is not a very fun combination. Also, this gap here. So, at the moment, it's meant to be used for anti-missile systems. However, I would like to see perhaps another turret, as that would be amazing. Having four of those front-facing turrets would mean this thing's damage per second would be absolutely insane. A nice, very compact, very tanky little vehicle able to actually crush naval units who try to oppose it. But I do want to do one more thing though. I want to see how well this thing actually takes damage. So let's summon in something that can actually fight back. Try to. Sadly, in the first battle, the enemy spawned so far away, the battle didn't even happen. And we are going to be against the Warden. I think the Warden's a good enemy to test this vehicle against, because they are essentially the same cost. They're only about 10,000 resources apart, and the Warden has maximum gauge cannons, or at least very close to maximum gauge cannons, with very high explosive damage. Essentially, it's enough to rip apart certain parts of the hull of our airship, so it's a good test in terms of how much damage can be dealt to us, but also can we disable the enemy before it does completely destroy us. I will be turning my healing off as soon as we get out of here, like so, and then going into this mode so we can actually see what's going on. There's the enemy turning to face us, and we're turning to face them as well. And let's go into that mode, there we are. Okay, so, let's see what happens. And so, I was about to say smack, but sadly the Warden did miss. I would like to see a couple of hits, it's got to be honest. Oh, and the Warden only has four guns. I actually thought it had a lot more. Mouse just buggering up then. Can we at least hit the target? Come on, Warden, hit the thing. I need to see how well it takes damage. Thank you. Okay, I directed on the side and didn't even slow it down. Okay. Oh. Apparently, though, the cannons have weathered the front of the Warden, and I don't think it's quite going to be able to fire anymore. Okay, yeah, the Warden's down. The Warden lost. It's very apparent. But I wanted it to actually be hit a little bit more. Okay, summon in another Warden. Now, our airship does have over 50 repair bots, so it should be able to defend itself or heal itself pretty well during a battle. I'm just hoping one of these things actually faces the enemy when it spawns in. Come on, hit me please. Thank you. And... 
No! <laughs> okay, yeah, hit on the back, I guess. Not much happening, though. Maybe we should spawn in something like the Bulwark, which can actually shoot more than one gun. And there we are, that's what I wanted to see. A lot of misses there, the ship's still in the air, and there we go, a hit on the bottom, nothing major done. Healing up by itself, excellent. I think the cannons are now reloading, because how long the battle's been going on for. The left one's back online. Oh no, it's just changing targets, I think. Oh wow, that looked really painful, the whole thing just shuddered. It's not really taking that much damage though, I mean, nothing vital is actually being destroyed. Oh, I say that as I think it's took out the engine. Okay, a lot of main shots have been able to take out the engine. Will it repair itself before it crashes? That's the big question. It's still in the battle. It has beat one of them and it is beating up the second. Wait, how many do I spawn in? There's only two left. Maybe it beat more than I thought it did. Cam oh, there it goes! Back into the air! It's not out of it yet. Self-healing at its best. Self-healing and heavy armor right there. And the music finally kicks in. Oh, it's been so slow though. And this is why it needs shields. If this thing has shields, it's going to be a nightmare to try and take out. The t oh, the enemy are now healing each other. They're so close. Oh, I thought we had a chance. But that self-healing really is me messing us up. No, I think the airship's going down for its last time now. A lot of respect for how long that lasted though, that lasted a long time under a brutal amount of damage, but sadly there we are, it is down and out. Well there we have it, we are back in the air and this poor thing weathered so much damage then, but honestly, I am pretty happy with it and I've just realised I could have turned back m on my self healing to actually help this thing get back into the air but completely forgot. Okay, there we go, we are now healing it if it takes damage. Yeah, I am really happy with that. The shields, of course, still weren't in place. Neither was a lot of the defense around the engine because the design isn't finished yet. And yet it took so much damage before finally being taken out of the skies. One thing I did notice, however, is these turrets run out of ammo a little bit too fast. So either lowering the fire rate or perhaps even lowering the gauge so we get more shells in each rack might be better. So I'll be messing around with that off camera, but right now, as you can probably tell, my throat has gave up, my voice is cracking something fierce, and illness once again is winning, so I'm afraid we are all out of time and out of health for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And of course, if you have a name for this lovely little mini airship drone, then of course leave it in the comments below. I will be reading them and trying to decide from one of the suggestions. I've got some fantastic suggestions so far for the capital ship, but of course now we have two things to name. I'll be finishing this off um, off camera and honestly we're not too far off. So we saw most of the construction. This will be the only build video with this flyer I think and next time we'll be doing the capital ship again. And I do apologize for so many building videos recently but considering I can't record in for very long, in very long um, clips it's a lot easier for me right now to do this than the campaign. We will be getting into the campaign probably next week as soon as my health regains. So thank you again. And goodbye.